Hello, my name is Mar Pimitel. I'm one of the CAM experts here at Hawkridge Systems, and in this video, we'll be talking about how to machine a large chamfer or tapered wall with a smaller tool. So this comes up a lot in programming where typically we'll use a chamfer mill or a tapered end mill to machine a draft angle, a tapered wall, or in some cases, a countersunk hole. Uh, and typically those tools are on size with that hole or close to the depth of that wall. So you don't really have to do any step overs. But what happens when the feature is larger than the tool? So we'll take a look at that here. The first thing you wanna do is take a look at how you're defining your pockets or your, or your profiles. Essentially on this part, I've broken down this countersunk hole into the circular pocket and the upper pocket that has the taper already defined. We're gonna take a look at that, as well as this open profile on here to represent the tapered portion of that slot. So I've broken it down just so we can see exactly how you address those individual items. Let's take a look at that circular pocket that has the taper defined. In terms of definition, I've chosen the top edge. And in doing so, I can give it a depth. In this case, this is the depth of that actual countersunk uh, feature there, but I've added just a little bit on the bottom there of 30 thou. You can take a look at that. That is so that when I am defining this tool, I can let it to just kind of over travel that edge to make sure I eliminate any burrs and I fully machine that entire angled surface. But the way that we tell it that there is an angled surface is this icon right here. So under side taper, I told it that that has a 45 degree from that top edge going inwards. Now, if this was going outwards, I can always toggle that to going outwards. That defines that countersunk hole there basically as a uh, as a angled pocket or a pocket that has a draft angle of 45. The same goes for that open profile. If I open that one up, again, same sort of thing. I just choose the top edge. And in doing so, I can give it a length that represents that entire length right there, plus just a little bit at the end to make sure that we travel past the edge to eliminate any burrs. And likewise, that has a seven degree angle. In this case, it is going outward from that cutting direction. So that now defines the features. And because this is cam works, as soon as I have features, I have operations. So let's take a look at how I define my operations. Again, breaking this up, we can see that I have my hole, but I also have my countersink. This is a standard rough mill operation, but because it's defined as having a tapered wall, you can see that I'm getting it to step out a little bit. I'm getting it to rough that actual tapered or cone shape there. Likewise for the open profile. If I take a look at how I roughed that open profile, I'm using a contour mill here because that is the, the default output for an open profile, but you'll notice that it also has a little bit of an angle there as well. That is the seven degrees being recognized from that, that open profile. So that is how I would rough it out. Now how to finish it with those angle tools. And that's kind of where this sort of uh, functionality comes into play. We have a countersink tool, a chamfer mill or a taper mill. It's the shape of the tool that we're trying to achieve the finish with. We're trying to use that angled face and made it to these final faces to get this to be finished. So let's see how I finish that countersunk hole. This is again using a contour mill toolpath because the feature is defined as having that angle. It already is starting to uh, uh, go outwards to that surface on that angle. But let's take a look at how this is actually programmed. So first thing to note is in my tool table, I'm using a countersunk tool. This is a single point tip tool, but I'm looking at the diameter here. This is being defined as a one inch diameter tool. And that becomes important because if I don't do any offsets in my contour mill, you can see here I've offset it by the radius of the tool. For this single point tool, if I left it at its full diameter, it would offset by that full diameter. This contoured face, the angled face of my tool would never contact the countersunk face. So by offsetting by the radius of the tool, what I achieve, if I just bring this in here and get to the nodes, is I achieve that mating. So instead of using the full diameter riding along that, that uh, tool path there, I'm actually bringing the center of the tool to that tool path and hugging that face right there, achieving the finish. Now to tell it how to step along that surface, I'm using the method of distance along. And because that defines a distance along that taper rather than just in Z, I'm getting an equal distance across that surface. Let's take a look at how I finish that tapered wall. So this is a little different because the tool I'm using here is a tapered end mill. This is a uh, quarter inch end diameter. 
So that is the diameter that gets used for the offset, but it actually has a shank diameter of a quarter of a half inch. So keep that in mind when you're defining your offsets. If you define your tools with the end diameter being the actual tip of that tool, then when we get to the contour, we can leave it at zero. It will offset by the actual tip of the tool along that face. And because this face or this wall was defined as having that seven degree angle, it actually will hug that surface as well. Let's take a look at that one here as well. So that distance right there is the radius of the tip of the tool. And because it's riding along right there on that tip diameter, the walls hug, it finishes that wall. And likewise, I'm using distance along so that I can step along the surface rather than just in Z. Let's take a look at that all together. And now we have a finished face. Not only did we have a uh, roughed out tapered wall, you can see there, there's the steps. We also have a finishing of that taper wall so that it completely finishes it. Likewise, for the roughing of that wall, you can see that it adds the scallops as well. So even though you might have smaller tools compared to the features, you can still add your step downs, your step overs. You can still contour it to the shape of the tool to those faces and achieve the parts you're looking to machine. Any questions of this or anything else, give us a call on the phone number found on our website and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.